Right, we're here with a special video today with uh, Harinder Singh, a special guest, come along to talk to us about Sikhian media, Sikhian films. We've recorded this at the beginning of the new year, March 2008, and very happy to have our guest with us today, which happens to be Harinder Singh, all the way from Sikh Re, which stands for Sikh Research Institute. Absolutely, welcome. And uh, you know, we've had a, a few uh, audio sessions together and uh, we were very keen on putting together some video to talk about uh, your involvement. Uh, specifically, you've been involved in quite a lot of film uh, productions. Uh, I'd like to ask you about what they were, what was your involvement, and generally, how do you feel about the way Sikhs are portrayed in the media? Sure, I mean, you know, media has become one of the you know, bigger tools to be utilized in projecting image. Uh, whether it's used as a tool for propaganda, actually some communities use that for uh, propaganda purposes as well. But I think what Sikhs need to figure out is how to tell our own story through our own mechanisms, including whether it's using from PowerPoint presentations to films to documentaries to whatever else it is through e-technologies if possible and YouTube. And I was reading today that there is a comp competition to YouTube out there, maybe you should look into that as mm -hmm. well. Uh, so, you know, my involvement has been with a couple of feature films and one documentary and uh, essentially in, in a consultancy role, I was, uh, I will talk about a couple of them with The Widow Colony, which is a film about uh, women voices of uh, anti-Sikh pogroms in 1984. And there what we have done is we have taken uh, uh, the interviews of the survivors and the attorney who has been fighting on their behalf in the last 20 years and the filmmakers on, uh, were Manmeet Singh was a director and producer, uh, sorry, producer was Manmeet Singh and director was Harpreet Kaur on that and I was a script and production consultant on it. We raised the funds through Institute and we did the editings and the research part on it. So essentially what, what the film is about is there is a lot of uh, churning of political ideas surrounding 1984 so there is a lot of punditing going on around it. But what is not happening is what do survivors think. So we took that and we contextualized it with some experts who know, who understand the issue both from international human rights perspective as well as Indian realities on fighting injustices. Let me just uh, stop you there for a second and ask you about the fact that um, if you look at a film like that, I mean there's not been that many films that have actually covered that particular issue. Okay, what you've done is look at it, what you've been involved in a particular angle, which mm -hmm. is the survivors, the widows, uh, the people that actually suffered that mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, inhumanity. Um, and it's it's good to see that real true story. Do you think there's a, a kind of argument that says that content like that should just kind of um, arrive? People people should just have different angles from all different backgrounds. I know there's a film recently called Amu uh, as well. Uh, is it? Well, I was I was you know we are we are part of that film too. We raised funds for it and we were involved in promoting it as well. And that's a good creative expression of how you take, you know, what you do usually call historical fiction, essentially. Right. You take something which is real, you present it in a creative manner, which becomes real to the audience. So the both works are actually complementing each other, and Shanali Bose, its director, mm. came to the premiere of Pido Colony and vice did. versa. Okay. Uh, and, and, and that's what's needed. We don't need to just have explicit things. We need those uh, from documentation purposes and to actually have survivor voices. But additionally, we need creative approaches to these. Recently, uh, I was uh, uh, as a consultant, religion consultant on a feature film called Ocean of Pearls, which is directed by Dr. Srabji Singh Neeram. And this is another, again, creative interpretation without the preaching angles to who Sikhs are. This actually is a regular first feature film from Hollywood, which happens to have a lead uh, who's a Sikh guy. But the movie is not about Sikhs or Sikhi. The movie is actually about uh, a doctor who is... Uh, it's about his development and, uh, and he's facing some ethical dilemmas on healthcare issues in America. So, I mean, these are the kind of things which are needed, which, you know, when you become part of the mainstream and you start dealing with the issues which not only are affecting six, but are affecting, like in this case, Americans. So I think newer interpretations are needed. Other things are coming along. I know there is a movie out called Kambi Kalai by Ish. And, you know, it's again, you know, people are trying. I think newer things are happening. SickNet started this uh, film festival online. Yeah. There's yeah. a yeah. spinning wheel yeah. going on all yeah. over uh, North America. I think the trends are changing where people are participating in alternative ways of looking into what Sikh issues are and issues at large 
and trying to do our own interpretations. The term that's used is called VC2, which is viewer created content. Right? Um, and the reason why I was actually going down the route of actually asking about the, uh, the particular movies that are coming out, whether it be just after 1984 mm -hmm. or in recent times, they ne haven't necessarily had an influence uh, or have they had an influence on changing the mainstream thinking that whatever actually happened was injustice. So you can consider content from the perspective of doing it because it's creative mm -hmm. or creating content because you think that it can motivate people or actually capture the imagination of individuals to actually drive change. So really... I think, I think right now we, what you're looking at is really initial works. You know, you can't expect it to have large impact when these things are being introduced. As we become better at it, as we become more creative at it, as we become more adaptive in utilizing more of the skills and connecting with the audience, I think they will generate impact. I mean, let's look at a case study. Steven Spielberg didn't come out on his first day and he didn't make uh, uh, Schindler's List of his first movie. He was at the height of his power before he made that movie. And let's look at when Mel Gibson made, uh, he talked Braveheart. about Rusty Wallace and Braveheart. Yeah. You know, it's after they get to certain levels in their life. So similarly, I think, uh, we are sometimes in too much hurry, we want the change to occur right away. Well, these are just tools available again. But we saying that, it also has a uh, kind of... Um, but saying that, there's also the fact of available funding as well. You know, there's sometimes art council funding, yeah. or you've got people that back the films as well. Uh, the fact that, I'm not saying that they're going to have their own agenda, yeah. but they actually feel that it's important to inject money into that particular and, form and of art. We're, and we're so, beginning you know, to making see a movie that. like Braveheart is yeah. quite an well, expensive film to make. Well, now we are beginning to see that. I think you know, as the, as the talents and skills are uh, coming out, as people are taking more trainings, they are more, it's more than a home video, and you will see fundings for these things. Uh, but you know, I want to also bring another perspective into this. When you see actually movie or film or creative media stuff today, you will see almost all of these efforts are coming outside of India. And there's a reason for it that within Indian context, when you look at the movies or the document, well, primarily movies, the image they have in, in, in Indian movies of the six, primary, you know, showing them as either uh, jokers or showing them as being somebody who is uh, really out of their way, going out of their way to kill more Pakistanis, for example, to show how patriotic they are. It's a lot of propaganda and a lot of uh, belittleism, I guess I'll call it. Stereotyping and talking. Yeah, there's costumes. a lot of stereotyping. It's sort of like when you will see African Americans in movies before 1960s in America. So what I think diaspora is doing is they are actually looking at some of those issues and people are going out of their way. And then in the UK, whether you like it or not, it's a separate issue. But when the Chanda came up with you know series of interpretations on and then South as being a South Asian woman, she is getting acceptability in the mainstream media as well. So I think it's it's really not about it's not about being in a hurry that people need to listen to us whether we have an agenda to convert our view or present our view or opinion. It really more is about are we sure on how to present these stories? Are we getting trainings on being uh, creative in these measures? And I do want to mention a sick inspiration regarding these things. I think you know most of the larger Sikh community needs to understand that creative expressions are very very important whether they are in music, whether they are in literature, fine arts of any kind. So I think we need to encourage our communities and other you know, outside of uh, the traditional lawyer, doctor, engineering streams and going to more creative expressions as well. There is the issue um, uh, I mentioned before about the, the financing part of it as well. It's kind of like the cost of return as well. You know, um, it's good to be creative, right. yeah, but then if someone can get a return on that investment, yeah. then maybe maybe there needs to be enough going out there so that those that, you know, there's, a, there's an art, art process. Uh, do art films make money or should they make money? Well, you know, uh, that's a debate which is not exclusive to sex. I mean, that issue is being faced by artists all over the world. What I do find, though, as an escape, escape is among, among Sikh, Indian and Punjabi community and South Asian communities is, well, there is not enough money, yeah, but what about the talent? I think if you are talented, people do pick you up. You know, there are film festivals all over the world and as we, again, we are in a hurry to get recognition, I think that's the problem. People need to really work at becoming ustads, as they say in the Indian terminologies, which is, you know, how have I perfected my skills? Have I really created a new genre? Have I even contributed to anything before I expect to get returns on these things? Just like there are hundreds of doctors, not everyone makes it a big doctor, you know, few people become good. I'm talking about having a generic stream of people, general stream rather, 
who are actually looking into these things and if there are 100 people who study films and become good actors, producers, editors, you know, there will be out of those maybe one or two will come out on the scene at a, at a, at a larger level which is beyond Sikh and Indian or South Asian communities. So the other thing I wanted to ask you about was that the world's changing, it's becoming a faster place, you know, mm -hmm. there's content on the move in terms of mobile phones, um, there's the internet, and it's getting more and more prolific in terms of people using technology or actually viewing their content online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mentioned YouTube earlier on. Right. Um, and I know we've had discussions in the past about the uh, consistency and the importance of uh, syllabus and the importance of uh, uh, making sure that the, at the end of the day, uh, curriculum I is looked at as well. Mm -hmm. Now my question is really around resources, um, around the, the film, we're talking about film, we're talking about art. You know, where, where is that consistency, especially online? Because anybody today can set up a website and then say whatever they want to say. Well, you know, again, you know, I think the onus comes down to the individuals who really want to do a good job in making these things. You know, we are again not the only community who is immune to this. Every community is facing this. There is diversity of opinion. I think what really needs to happen is people doing their thorough job in understanding the content and its context and then actually doing its interpretation. If you have, if we are in a hurry, then you will have websites which are popping up everywhere or you'll have films which might not understand the needs of the community and they might be superfluous and being very judgmental and a lot of that is going on as because it is a new thing and we don't know how to handle it. There are debates within the community regarding whether certain icons or images should be shown or not. And I think all of that, if we have a thoughtful approach to it, just like whether it's a website or a good book or a creative poetry or being a thespian, any of those requires us to become uh, sort of, you know, thought-provoking but yet thoughtful in our presentations as well. So I think it's, a, it's one of those growing pains where if you're a serious director, you'll spend 10 years understanding how films are to be directed instead of saying, you know what, I, exact, I have an idea and I know what to do and you just go out there and your film doesn't work, then you're like, why didn't it work? Well, maybe I don't understand how direction, uh, maybe I need to get training in that. One of the encouraging things about Bollywood in recent years is that Bollywood's trying different formulas. It isn't the love triangle anymore. There are underlying stories where the love triangle actually exists, but uh, they are experimenting, and therefore there might be opportunities for new directors to come in. Um, and, and I think that there, there could be opportunities there uh, within Bollywood to change you mentioned it before, the kind of stereotypical aspect um, and change the way in which people think. I know what I find quite upsetting actually about Bollywood is the assumption, um, and I'll give, I'll give you classic, um, and you mentioned some of them before, there's the joker element, there's the transportation element, taxi drivers portrayal is awful, uh, the fact that they, they may be the, the last part of the joke uh, and, and, and this this is the um, biggest one being uh, you know that we are the martial race and projecting that stereotype by which or, or, or being short, short tempered yeah or, or you know and, and not necessarily showing them as real people who at the end of the day are the the saint soldiers the, the those who are selfless in service as well the positive side that we all are you know and and it is very upsetting also the main issue that I have with Bollywood is the way in which uh, repeatedly they are showing, they meaning the current film directors, are showing uh, mixed mixed communities. I'm not talking against the fact that you know there are communities that exist where you know Sikhs may marry Hindus or whatever or, or the other way around but there always seems to be that particular angle where they may go to a village and they'll find um, the actual el elders will be or some of them will be wearing turbans or will be Sikhs and the other half won't be. So, so what's actually happening is that you see um, mixed groups within Bollywood, okay, and I'm not saying that the, you know, Sikhs and Hindus and Hindus and Sikhs don't marry, or there's kind of interracial marriages happening on that level, but there seems to be a predominance within Bollywood storylines to actually show that, okay, whether it be a love triangle situation, or whether it be the fact that, you know, the, yeah. the, you know there's, a, there's a, a, uh, a male and female that may not be following the Sikh way. Now, for me, uh, that seems to be um, of uh, prominence to the film directors, they say, well, okay, that's great, we'll show that, we'll show the village, uh, or we'll show a city, and we'll show that these people are uh, not quite Sikh all the way through. And I, and I just think, kind of, they're trying to paint a position, and I, and I could be wrong here, that the fact that there is, um, they're part of Hindus. 
Uh, well, or, you know, or, they, or, they're, or they're not part of Hindus, but they, they're okay to easily mix with others. There are at least uh, two analyses I'm aware of on Bollywood portrayal of sex, and there is it's extensively done looking at several case studies of which you know how the Indian or Bollywood films are portraying sex, and I think large segment of the Sikh community agrees with that analysis, which is that it's very intentional and uh, it's almost deliberate. Uh, the only encouraging part I find, I, I don't find uh, Hollywood movies from that angle uh, worth watching to be honest because it's pretty deliberate, but the only encouraging part is there are few progressive directors when they are looking at, and it's very, very few, I can name a couple of them here, but, but what they are doing is when they are presenting whether it's a story of partition, whether it is the contemporary phenomena going on with Punjab or Indian politics, they are trying to be quite accurate about it, but again, those are nobody watches those kinds of movies. You know, it's maybe one or two people watching those movies out of hundred thousand. But the you know, growing up, I thought the best movie I have seen where the six are portrayed properly was English Patient. <laughs> and I mean, outside of that, it's just a whole bunch of jokes. You know, but I think with the resurgence of uh, newer Indian, uh, sorry, uh, Sikh. Uh, descent or sick background directors and actors, you will see some of those changes. But I'm not very hopeful from Hollywood, uh, from Bollywood, to be honest, because I think they have repeatedly shown that they're uh, that they're not really. Because there's, there's a formula that works. And well, I think part of it is formula. Part of it you have to understand how the the bigger agenda of Bollywood works as well, mm. uh, which is uh, involved in all sorts of funny things. Mm. I mean, uh, you can uh, look into the analysis of who finances the films and. Why they assert, Why is it that in one year there are five movies on Bhagat Singh out and all five of them, they all came four years ago and all five of them are presenting the same legendary son of Punjab in five very, very different ways. And there's a whole debate in India based on these five movies, whether Bhagat Singh is a Sikh hero, whether he's a Punjabi hero, whether he's an Indian hero and the political elements of it. Communists are claiming he's their hero, and now Manmohan Singh, Prime Minister, saying, "Well, he's actually Indian hero." Earlier, Arya Samaji said he's their hero. So there is political undertones to all of these, and there are reasons why Sikhs are portrayed the way they are. It is beyond, I think, sometimes even screen players or uh, uh, directors reach. They're just presenting, I think, what they sometimes are taking, uh, thinking will be selling more. So in order to change, are we only reliant on the new generation, the next generation of uh, film directors, or do you think there's anything that we can do today to help that? Because we can't say overnight, hey, stop going to see those films. Uh, can we write to these people? Can we lobby? Is there something that we can do right well, now, or do we have to wait for a next generation? There have been movements like that. Again, everything helps, but I think the larger, I know I'm aware, Last week there was a news story that there is a sick guy in complete form who looks like a sick who is being asked to play in some of the Hollywood movies, which is uh, Bollywood movies, which that. is an encouraging sign as well. But I think those are anomalies still. I think the larger thing is that you're dealing with certain mentalities and certain uh, at, uh, uh, lifestyles and certain sort of bigger plans, I guess some people might even call it conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the outside movies, Hollywood movies, and the British, and the Chattas, and perhaps even people like Neera Nair, if they take on some of these projects, they might be able to portray six in their proper light. I think other than that, right now, we haven't really seen anything but promising. No, the viewing public can't do anything about it. We just have to be the receivers. You know, people have tried it. There have been things written uh, in, in, a, what, you know, in a civil disobedience manner, a lot of letter writings to uh, uh, the censor boards in India and other things, but you know, at the end of the day, nothing really comes out of it. Right, okay, and then maybe it's up to committees to maybe um, uh, champion the cause and say that's actually wrong and lobby for that. Yeah, at some point, but you know, the lobbying process as we understand in the West is very different in India. So censor boards are the ones who have some control over this and perhaps uh, bureaucrats can be approached to do something about it. But I think at the end of the day, it comes down to uh, providing alternatives. I think everyone has their own agenda. Six have their own agenda. Every director has their own agenda. I don't think it's about just Bollywood. I think we all have our agenda. It's, I think people should be providing alternatives and at some point it took Denzel Washington several movies before he was seen as a mainstream actor in, 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 in American movies. So I think it's okay. I think these are challenges and we should take them head on. Uh, they should not. They frustrate us, but I think we need to channelize the frustration and anger into more creative approaches. You, know, you think it's a situation where there could be like almost like a, a media watchdog 
that says, well, actually, uh, this is blasphemous, yeah. or you shouldn't really say that because that's wrong? Well, I think we have to be very, very careful with that. You know, uh, it becomes very easy to call everything blasphemy, and then UK has had its share of it, you know, with certain plays which uh, I don't want to get into it. But my point is, we have to be very careful. Maybe, maybe there just needs to be more debate and more, you know, uh, opportunities to, to discuss it with those individuals I, to I, see where they've gone wrong. I, I mean, among other things, that's one of the things, yes. All right, okay. Um, just uh, one more, we're talking about arts and all those great things. Now, a few years ago, 1999, the, the Victoria Royal Albert Museum did actually do quite a lot of work in terms of celebrating 300 years of um, uh, the birth of Khalsa. And um, there's also lots of things in museums, there's exhibitions that happen, um, there's a lot of artifacts that are spread across different countries, aren't there? Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if there's an opportunity for uh, almost like documentaries to be done to help, uh, you know, ca uh, to uh, capture. Yeah. Uh, Again, you know. I, I, hope there's, I wonder if there's an opportunity for documentaries to be built, uh, put together to maybe capture that information, to catalog it, you know? Well, there definitely is, but you know, I think one thing we have to be very careful of, we have just started doing these things, and in the last 15 years, more so in the last 10 years, some of the six have gotten very interested in the arts world and documentary and filming and artifacts and all sorts of, in fact, I'm involved with another project where we're setting up an online digital library of anything and everything related to Sikhs and Punjab, but we have to be very careful about one thing, a lot of the information and a lot of the artifacts are being presented as sick things or sick artifacts or sick paraphernalia, but they actually have very little to do with the sick. Just like you talked about in the movies, there is this, you know, sort of a different agenda going on and things being misrepresented. Same stuff is happening in the art world. A lot of the Punjabi things or Indian things, again, I have nothing against that, but you know, when you're cataloging it, when you're presenting things that this is a sick idea, or let's say you show a portrait and say this is sick art, well, is it? I think that's the kind of questions we haven't started to ask yet. And a lot of the Indian, South Asian, Punjabi things are being presented as Sikh art. And we have to be a bit careful about that. Again, this happens in the beginning. We are just starting out in these things. But as we develop expertise in it, and as we have more people who are looking into these things, we need to start sort of differentiating them as well. I think one of the disturbing things for me was I saw um, a quite a famous art critic who was actually at the Imperial War Museum and he was actually standing in front of a, uh, a picture of a Sikh soldier, happened to be somebody who took part in, uh, I think it was in World War Two, mm -hmm. and, uh, and he looked around at the picture and he said, um, I don't know who he is. And, and I, I thought that was first of all ignorant, um, first of all because he was doing it on national TV, and secondly I thought, you know you should really d know better mm -hmm. than that to do that kind of thing. So in a way mm -hmm. it isn't necessarily about art that, that we've got as Sikhs, but it's also about, you know, uh, images and uh, looking at different museums where there have been historical recordings of what's actually taken place. If you go, for example, to Osborne House in um, on the Isle of Wight, which happened to be the residency of Queen Victoria, there is the Durbo room there, and there are pictures of um, Maharaja Dilip Singh that she did in watercolours, uh, and she used to actually uh, quite adore that particular individual in terms of you know feeling quite close to him. So. You know, there are other locations where other documentation and other, you know, artifacts have been um, catalogued. And I think it would be quite useful to include that as well. You know, Different interpretations, are, you know. There are uh, efforts underway. There are few good organizations which have popped up and who are looking into these things in a more diligent and serious manner rather than just something, you know, you do one time and you move on as a romantic gesture. And that's what all of these things require. You know, you initially start these things out because you feel like it. And at some point, when some pe few people make careers out of this, we will see a better, more comprehensive, and more creative angles to it. I just want to say one more thing. That was um, recently the BBC did a documentary. Uh, they went around India and normally do this kind of stuff. They have different guys running around doing it. And I, I actually wrote to the BBC and said that I actually was very disturbed by the way in which the whole Mughal Empire had been skimmed over in terms of making them to be looking like good guys. Yeah. You know. Um, and there was no mention of any other activity that was going on. And, and you know and I know that, you know, one of the most important aspects of their reign was the fact that, you know, uh, their demise, um, you know, the Sikhs were very, very involved in the fact that uh, we were against the ethnic cleansing campaign that they were, they were involved in. Now, it seems to be almost washed over the ethnic cleansing aspect of the Mughal Empire. 
and many documentary makers are skinning over that. I find that quite disturbing. Well, again, you know, every director and producer uh, is going to have their own lens and they're going to have their own funding sources which dictate what you show. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you, there are lots of disturbing things going on. And uh, recently in Canada, there was a documentary where whole of Sikh community was portrayed as terrorists. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to face those things. I think there needs to be responses to them. There need to be, but at the same time, I have seen documentary on History Channel in America on 1984. I haven't seen anything like it where they actually presented the Sikh side as well as the government side. Mm -hmm. And you know, that goes into the core of issues of journalistic abilities and uh, recently I saw a movie about how 60 Minutes didn't do a show initially uh, because they were too scared that the tobacco industry will buy them. And, and uh, So I think organizations, media outlets, they, we all have our own shortcomings, we have our own agendas. But I, I take those opportunities when we don't like something, we should either campaign against it or come with a better alternative and make it available to public so your viewpoint is also heard or seen. I think that's the, otherwise we just get upset and frustrated and sometimes we don't know how to respond and the responses sometimes become very ugly. I come from that school of which believes, you know, you take all your anger and frustration, you channelize into some either civil disobedience movement or you start your own responses and present your sides of the stories. Yeah, I think that's a good way to end to say that there are lots of good things happening. Yeah. You know, uh, and there are lots of opportunities to, for people to help each other. Yeah. Uh, and also to help those that do make that misinformation yeah. uh, reconsider why they did it in the first place and how they should improve. And the problem is that most of us, when we don't like it, we just remain spectators and we get frustrated in their after dinner side of scenarios. Yeah. I think if you're not liking something, you know, help those organizations who are trying to do something about it. Mm help the media outlets who are trying to do something about it, whether it's a written media or visual media. So the way people can get involved in these things is to go buy and see movies which you think are presenting the sick perspective properly. Uh, and, and more VC too as well, more viewer created content which is uh, something that's good and high quality yeah, and absolutely. Get you know, involved. provides a good image. Yeah, get involved, absolutely. That's right. Okay, Rinda, thanks very much for meeting up again. Oh. Uh, really uh, value your time. Uh, wish you all the best on your world tour oh. that you'll continue to do. And uh, we'll hopefully catch up with you sometime. Thank you. Thanks.